A team that is routinely out of the transfer portal extravaganza every single year is Dabo Sweeney in Clemson. Once again, not really using the portal. And I understand they've taken a one-off guy here or there. They took a quarterback, I believe, a couple of years ago that was at Clemson out of high school, and then he went to Northwestern, then he came back to Clemson. Like, you hear what I'm saying. Clemson does not really use the portal. And I don't think that there's so much pushback on, on Clemson not using the portal as there's pushback on Clemson not using the portal and then not getting the results that they've come to expect. Clemson did not have a bad year last year by most college football team standards. I went eight and four going in the bowl game, won the bowl game, had a nine win season. Like, you know how many teams would kill to win nine games? Not to give Colorado a stray here. You know how much Colorado would kill to win nine games? They would love to have that. But for Clemson, it's not what they're used to. It's not the standard that's been set for them over the course of Dabo Sweeney's time out there at Clemson. They made the college football playoff six years in a row. Like that, that's been what they expect. They expect to compete for national titles and make the college football playoff. Now, they won the ACC two years ago, so let's make sure we have that out there. But the problem, again, isn't the fact that they're not using the portal. The problem is they're not using the portal and not getting the results that they expect to have. Now, Dabo not using the portal isn't a new thing. Nobody was complaining about him not using the portal when they were reeling off college football playoff appearances. But the fact that they've missed the college football playoff now, the last three seasons, it's becoming more of a talking point, becoming more of an issue. And my issue, probably to take it a step further, is that you're getting beaten by teams that are making a point to use the portal. The way that it looks to me is you're being passed by other teams that you used to pretty much just beat every single year, and now that's not the case. Florida State, they beat you with a bunch of transfers this year. Keon Coleman made the game-winning grab for a touchdown. He was a guy that was in the portal that Clemson, I'm sure, very much so could have made a play for, should they have chosen to. Miami, I understand that it wasn't a bunch of transfers, but they still use the portal, and they're going to be a better roster this year because of what they've done through the portal over the course of the winter and spring. NC State, they use the portal. They beat you. And so you're starting to see this trend where it's like, if Clemson were to go to the portal and have a key on Coleman, does that Florida State game look different? Because I think to me, the portal is really two things at the end of the day. First, the portal is a tool. The portal is a way for you to give yourself a better chance for success. The way that I think about it, you can do your math homework for our college audience that's probably finishing up finals now or graduating. Shouts to y'all. You can do your math homework and do mental math and still get the right answer. It might take you a lot longer, and there's a lot more of a chance that you will have some errors in there if you're just doing mental math or trying to work it out on paper. But if you use a calculator, you're going to have a larger percentage chance of getting the right answer and probably have capacity to do more. Now, it doesn't mean you're smarter. doesn't mean that you're better, but you know how to work a calculator. You know the right buttons to press. You're going to have a better chance at success. Doesn't mean you have a right culture. Doesn't mean that you have better coaching staff. But if you're able to use the portal, you're going to help yourself have a better roster talent level going forward. Dabo Sweeney could use the portal and still be successful and still have a solid culture and still have a good coaching staff and still keep all the things that he cares about intact. I don't think it's a thing where you have to just throw away culture for the portal. In fact, I would say the opposite. If you have such a strong culture, you could add three to five guys and have your culture that's already strong internally absorb those three to five players, have them buy into what you're doing, and go forward from there and have a better roster talent level. So the portal, again, is a tool. It's a tool to make your roster better. The second part of this, and Andy Staples, I think, made a great point doing, during his uh, reaction of Duke versus Clemson. You all saw that game early in the season. Duke beats Clemson, and we're talking about, well, what if they had used the portal? Andy Staples said the portal is really used to fix recruiting mistakes. So the way that I think about it, the portal is a, is a way to make things right. The portal is like an apology. Hey, we missed on this kid. Hey, we missed at this position. Hey, we don't have enough depth here. Let's go to the portal and remedy that. The portal is kind of like an apology. And in 2020 and 2021, Clemson had two top five classes. So in theory, they should have had what they needed, right? Well, it worked out that they didn't based on what they haven't done these last couple of seasons. So let's go out and fix that if we're Clemson. The portal is an apology. So if you want to keep enjoying these champagne problems, if you want to keep enjoying champagne, you got to have the roster and the depth to be able to enjoy the college football playoff appearances, right? It's no longer a situation in college football 
where you can maybe use the portal, maybe not use the portal. It's, it's not an option anymore. Everyone and their mama that is winning at a high level is utilizing the transfer portal. And so going back to the portal being an, an apology, like I think the portal is a need for all schools for sure. But I think the question might draw a little bit deeper with Clemson of like, okay, well, why are we having to apologize so much? Why don't we have what we need at receiver? Why aren't we able to create explosive plays down the field? Did we miss at the high school level too many times? That in itself, I think, it needs to be reevaluated and be readjusted. So the obvious thought forward now, and the thing that I think most Clemson fans would tell you is, well, if we win big in 2024, we're not even talking about this. And I think that's true. Like, if you win the ACC, you make a playoff run, the volume on this portal conversation gets turned down tremendously. That's 100% true. The approval rating for Dabo Sweeney, not that it was ever in question, but it definitely gains a few more points. But I think anything short of winning a national championship, there is always going to be this question for college football fans and Clemson fans alike of, well, what if Clemson went out and added that one other piece to change the game in the fourth quarter in that national title game so they could score an extra touchdown? Like, you see what I'm saying? You, you live in this area of constant what if. What if we had Keon Coleman against Florida State would be the question I would ask. And I'm not saying that Clemson was ever interested or could have even landed him. I'm just saying if you had someone of his caliber, that game is different. If you go out and land a couple other pieces on offense or pieces on defense to change the game in that one situation, that one hypothetical, does that give you a different result? And so again, I think as long as they're not winning national championships, people are going to say, are we doing all we can? Are we doing everything that we need to do to win a national championship, to have the roster to win a national championship? Because if we don't, if we're not doing that, then what's this all about? And again, expectations and reality, that equals happiness to me. Like how much the the gap is between those two things. If you're just expecting to win eight, nine games a year, you can do that and not use the portal. Clemson recruits well enough. They have a big enough brand. Dabo Sweeney is a good enough coach to where they can make that happen. But if you're expecting to compete for college football playoff berths and compete for national championships, I think you need to play the game everyone else is playing and acquire top talent that becomes available for your roster via the transfer portal. Last thing I'll say here, there sometimes becomes this talking point whenever Clemson the last couple of years has stumbled and lost a game or two of, well, it wasn't, it wasn't always this way. There wasn't always these expectations to win national championships and win the ACC. Like, when Dabo Sweeney got to Clemson, Clemson was not what they are now. They were a middle-of-the-road ACC team. They were trying to make a bowl game every single year, try to win eight, nine games. Like, that was a good year at Clemson. But I think it's tough to say, well, it wasn't always this way, and complain when you're held to the standard you've created, and then just have that standard you've created and sticking to it. Like, low expectations is not a gift, <laughs> It should be a privilege that people expect you to win the ACC. It should be a privilege that your fan base expects you to go and compete for national championships. It doesn't mean that when you fall short that you need to have this conversation and have this pushback of, well, this is how it used to be. It doesn't matter how it used to be. This is how it is now. And you've elevated your team to a certain place to where you can compete for those things and are expected of those things. That's a privilege. So I have an issue with the thought that there needs to be pushback on Clemson fans expecting too much. There's always extreme portions of fan bases. There's always extreme 10% of either side, whether it be hyper-optimistic or hyper-pessimistic, but I just happen to believe that the pressure that Dabo Sweeney has created for himself is a privilege, and I cannot wait to see how they respond in 2024. But again, for my money, I would love, love, love to see Clemson just add a couple more players, a couple more talented pieces to help them get back to where they expect to be and where that fan base expects to be. You do not need to sacrifice culture for talent via the portal. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.